Hey guys, this is CCL Extra Time, episode two. It's your boy Ryan. It's your boy Miowa. Uh, how you doing, Miowa? I'm all good, my man. How about yourself, Ryan? Glad to glad to get on this phone call with you. Everything on your side's doing going well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're wearing our jerseys today. Uh, don't want to give you too much of a hard time, but but the real supporters know that we're we're supporting the boys in blue over there yeah. across the pond in Chelsea. Go yeah. on. Yeah, blue's not really. I'm wearing my Atlanta United jersey. Okay. I, you know my MLS fandom here. Uh, keep, but, keep, keeping it domestic. I, I like to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Keeping it domestic. Uh, it has almost the same amount of history. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> For for the ones who know, you know it is it is a, a Nigerian legend's birthday today. So, and a and a former Chelsea player, John Obi Mikel, you know he he's the one who scores when he wants. If if you know, you know. So, yeah, rep, repping him and, and happy birthdays to the to the boy today. The streets will never forget for sure. Oh my! <laughs> so yeah, you know we're we're excited to be hosting extra time. You know episode two four for our membership and for our social media public. So, you know, let's, let's just hop right into it. I know everybody's continually dealing with the, the COVID-19 situation. So I, I'd say that's where we, we want to start off today's episode. Just, you know, we've sent out our official statement. We've continued to be in, in constant communication with, with our directors, our executive committee and our board of directors. So the, the entire CCL, you know, representation understands and knows what is going on right now. And we, we know they've been able to disseminate that information out to their clubs and their membership. So, so that's a, a really good key aspect right now going forward. So, you know, we, we have continued to stay in touch with VYSA and Maryland Youth Soccer to to make sure we're on top of things. We were also able to speak to Skip Gilbert, Marley, and Derek from U.S. Youth Soccer and the Leagues and Competition Committee. So they've been able to to provide us a little bit more feedback and and information. You know that that should be able to get out to our membership. Um, one thing that, that we should hit out on, and I know it's been a hot topic running around the, the community most recently with last week, the, the U.S. Soccer and Developmental Academy being closed down. So that's created a lot of communication, a lot of chatter, a lot of rumors, and a lot of movement within the, the league standpoint and, and platforms for you know, different regions, different states, you know, changing competitiveness nationally to potentially scaling it back to going regionally and locally for the benefits of once we do get outside of this, how can how can clubs manage that amount of travel, manage those expectations for families a little bit better? So, you know, for, for next week, I know we, we plan on bringing in some people to talk on that topic a little bit more and, and we'll be able to hit on that a little bit more, but I do want to just let our membership know that after our conversation with U.S. Youth Soccer, league championship will continue to run. So, you know, it was canceled this year, but USYS still has the, the plan of having the league championship pathway as a, as a valuable pathway for all of our CCL membership. You know, they'll be able to go from CCL league play with a, a direct pathway into the league championship, which the league championship has a direct pathway into regional championship, which essentially is the pathway into the national championship series. So, you know, from, from the CCL standpoint, we're excited to be able to, to come back and still offer our membership moving into 2020, 2021, the, the pathway to the regional championship. So, and I think, I think that, that covers a, a, a good bulk of the, the COVID 
19 update that we really wanted to give out today. And I want to I want to give my assist over right back to you, Ryan, and and let's let's discuss a little bit of you know let's go back to the good times we had in the beginning of the fall and winter and and highlight some of those moments that you can really speak on in regards to what we did in CCL during that first half of the year. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a stretch of time where all we did was work uh, a couple, you know, months where we worked hard to put our best uh, product out there for our consumers, but, you know, being in Richmond, putting up, you know, showcases, uh, getting college coaches to see our players and the amount of college coaches we had was, was crazy. I mean, we had, I mean, hundreds of college coaches there, at, you know, at a time. I don't, I don't know the exact amount, but. Yeah, no, we, we were able to bring in 160 to 210 for our two, you know, fall and winter showcases. So we, we had some very good representation from Division One down to the NAIA levels. And, you know, we, we had men's, women's programs from as far as California, Las Vegas, Florida, Virginia, Massachusetts. So we, we brought in a, a good variety of coaches into those, those showcase events. Yeah, and it, it wasn't just for the premiership. We had our championship showcase as well. So yep. we just came and, and saw our, you know, some of our cha championship players that are really good. Uh, so the CCL brand was, you know, very strong. Uh, Power of the League was was definitely um, was, it was definitely there, you know, and the you know back in the day, back when we could play soccer, uh, we really grinded out there. Uh, it's funny that we we say back in the day, but it it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. But right now, it was a week. as long as these people yeah. have been off the field, it feels like. One of your, your grandparents' folktale stories. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is unprecedented times, but, you know, we can always we can always look back, but, you know, moving forward, you know, we got to move forward in this and, and see, the, see the bright, see the, uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel, for sure. No, no it, it's, it's definitely starting to, to get over the hump. We're, we're starting to see a sprinkle of that light hit us, so... Yeah, I think once once this bad boy is is said and done, and and people are allowed to to get back out there, just know you know CCL is ready to to jump on this as quickly as possible and and continue to to offer you know productive and and competitive matches to our membership. You know we we still will follow all guidelines. We we don't know if we're going to be able to get back out there right away and play eleven v eleven. But, you know, we've looked into these options of how can we get teams back into competitive matches, you know, as quick as possible, but as safe as possible as well. Yeah, yeah, that's the key. Be safe, for sure. That's all we have is our bodies, our, you know, that's all we have right now, our health. Uh, and, and going forward, um, this week. No. What's up? Go ahead. Uh, this week we're doing our uh, CCL stay at home challenge against New England. Uh, we're doing uh, juggling this week. We're seeing videos up. Beach FC uh, has put a couple up that are pretty good. Uh, what do you think about it, Milo? No, it's 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 another challenge that that clubs and families have taken full advantage of. I definitely love the the video you're referring to the the Beach FC. You know that. They had an entire family getting involved, you know, yeah. three kids, mom, dad. Like I said, the CCL is, is, is a league not to be messed with when it's not just our players on the field, but the, it, it goes full circle around the entire family. So Definitely. we love to see stuff like that. We've gotten some really good juggling videos from New England. So I think, once again, this challenge this week is going to be a, a nice little hot spot for, for our memberships to – to see who can who can put out the most footage, who can who can juggle the most on their own. It's it's nice to see everybody getting involved. So so that's good. And then and then I know we, we plan on releasing the next stay at home challenge here within the next couple of days as well. Uh, yeah. Let's 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 do the people a quick favor for the ones who watched the show. 
you know, let's, let's tell them what the next challenge is so they can get a head start. You know, naturally we, 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 we always tell them the, the day of we're ready to display it. But for those who are, who are paying attention and watching this, you know, Ryan, fill us in on what the next challenge is set to be. So we're doing uh, just playing with our parents uh, next week. Uh, you'll, we'll see a couple of our directors playing some ball with their kids uh, that we'll show uh, this coming week. Uh, just put, you know, just hang out with your parents, man. They're, you know, they're people too. They can play too, as we see in the Beach FC video. Um, let's see it. Let's, 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 put a, let's put a caution out there. Not all parents are trying to get out there with their kids. So <laughs> if you ask mom and dad seven times and they continue to say no, move on to uncle and auntie and grandma. Yeah. They might be more willing. <laughs> but we, we, we do care about the parents right now. So making sure that we utilize them. Guess what? They're, they're at stay at home as well. So it could be that special activity they get to, to spend some time with their, their children. So we, we really wanted to push this challenge to see whose parents really got the, what do the kids nowadays call it? The, the juice, the sauce, and, <laughs> and, and then let's, let's see who can, who can manage to, to present that to us. So, so that's just a little sneak peek for you guys that are, are watching this. And the ones who don't, you'll, you'll get the notification of what the next week challenge is when it comes out. But, but until then, we, we do have some people who should be getting some advanced footage you know, from there. Also, another thing that I would want to highlight as we, we kind of speak on social media, the gauntlet was sent yesterday. So we got a, another group of seven directors who have been challenged. First, yeah. first wave of directors, I, I, I don't know if I can say you guys did a spectacular job or did a job at all getting <laughs> anything done, but you know, we, we got some footage from New England who said, hey man, throw us in this challenge. So, so we sent yeah. out challenge number two to directors yesterday, a nice little trash can challenge. Let's see who will be able to provide us some footage there. And then, and then next we, we also started the director challenge for, for New England. So they got challenge number one yesterday as well. So they, they're, they're gonna be knocking out trash cans and putting the ball inside the trash bins as well. So let's see which group, you know, can provide us with, with more directors jumping on the challenge. Yeah. CCL, major challenge to you guys, CCL New England, see if you can run by us. Yeah. Let's, let's see 100% participation in this one. All right. That's what I, we're I, going for. New England, I think, I feel like they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder uh, as the new guys coming in. Let's let's see if we can get 100% participation out of both uh, both leagues. No, it would, it would be good. I, I I won't lie. Based off based off social media, it, it looks like the second wave is ready. You know, if you if you check the comments, we got some people giving giving Kevin Cash a little bit of stick, yeah. saying he didn't hit it first time. I can guarantee cash money hit that ball first time. Yeah, shout out cash. Yeah, <laughs> definitely hit it first time. I, I know he hit it first time. <laughs> no, so, so no, it, it, it's, it's good to be able to present these challenges to our, you know, our directors. So now we really got our directors, we got our players all involved with some social media challenges. And, and we're just looking to get some, get some video sent in. Who, who can really rock these challenges out the park and, and show their skill? Yeah, let's let's see the uh, content machine that is CCL uh, work its magic for sure. Uh, I think it's going to be exciting. So, so now, yeah, I think I think we we should we should move on in this in this episode and let's bring out some some of these boys. I I, I want to say, you know, they're they're former CCL, but that that's right. Of course, they're former CCL players. We also send in the most you know college athletes into you know, NCAA to compete. So, you know, CCL is producing players nonstop. We're fortunate enough to get two former Loudoun soccer players on this phone call, current UVA, you know, athletes playing on the men's soccer team. 
So, so Ryan, I know you've been in, in constant communication with these guys. So we're, yeah. we're fortunate enough to have Colin and, and Chris Shuttler joining us during this phone call. Would, yeah. would you want to you want to speak on speak on these two guys a little bit before we get them to join us? Uh, yeah, Colin and Chris both play goalkeeper at UVA. Uh, Colin, he's the starting goalkeeper at UVA. Uh, baller, um, all tournament this year, all NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, helped lead his team to um, uh, the uh, NCAA uh, championship this year. Uh, I think just falling short. Um, he's a baller, Chris. He's a grad student. He uh, had four years at Binghamton University. I uh, can't transfer to UVA uh, this this coming school year. Uh, two college students right now, and uh, I think it'll be exciting. Yeah, Colin's coming on right now. Perfect. We go. Got, we got both of our guys logged in, audio set up. Colin, Chris, well, welcome to the second episode of, of CCL Extra Time. We're, we're glad to, to have you guys on the show. Who, who would have thought you guys, you leave the CCL, you, you go play some college ball and, and look how quickly it comes back and boom, right back into some CCL action. Hope, hope, hope you're ready for some competitiveness here. Yeah, of course. Oh, perfect. So, so really do appreciate you guys getting on the, the phone call. Not often do are we able to get two brothers and then two guys who play at the same university and two guys who play the same position. So I think, I think that's going to be a very interesting conversation we're ready to put on for, for our CCL membership. We'll, we'll try to go easy on you guys, but be prepared because I know you guys have been fighting for quite some years. We're gonna we're gonna put some battles on your plate to see who fights it out the best once again. Let's go. <laughs> no, but but bef before we go, I, I'll give you guys both just a moment to to introduce yourself, give a little bit of feedback. You know, teams you played for, graduating year, and then we'll then we'll really dive into some of the action. Okay. Cool. Oldest goes first. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, I played four years at Binghamton University in New York, uh, Division One school. Um, redshirted my freshman year, graduated last year in 2019, and then had the luxury of playing, uh, being on the UVA team this past fall uh, with Colin here um, and got to support him uh, from the sidelines and warm up for the games. And uh, it was a cool experience being a part of the team. And now I'm all done, and he's still going for it. So, Colin? And he was a part of Loudon 96, right? Right. 96 Red. Uh, b before college, I was Loudon 98 Red, played in the CCL, uh, went on straight to UVA where I redshirted my first year and have played my last two years where I am about to take my fifth year uh, playing year at UVA this coming fall, hopefully. Uh, with all the situations that are in place right now, I think we'll I think we'll dive into those situations. We, myself and Ryan, we spoke on them a little bit, but but no, really, really glad to have you guys on. I want to say, you know, one of those or or both of those teams had really good runs in BYSA State Cup regional play and national championship. Am I correct? Yeah. So uh, yeah, some... more than ninety eight, but. Uh... <laughs> So it was the 98 the group that might have might have brought a, a early national championship run to to Loudon? We made a few runs for it, but the 99s actually beat us in getting it. And getting it, okay. But you guys went at the during that same year. I want to say it was one year where both teams went. Yes, yeah, we okay. lost in the finals and they won it. Okay, no, that's that's still you know, especially going through what's happening in in the U.S. youth soccer pathway right now. That is back when, back when that was the go-to. That, yeah. that, that was the goal. That was gold on the crop right there. So, right. Yeah. I know, like I said, once again, glad to have both of you guys, you know, joining us. I know we'll, we'll dive into to a lot of questions. So, uh, I'll pass it over to, to Ryan. I know he has a couple things lined up that he wants to, to discuss going forward. 
Yeah, I just I just wanted to ask y'all both redshirted y'all's freshman year. Uh, going into that, what was y'all's thought process uh, going in? Yeah, um, I mean, as, as a goalkeeper, it is really hard to come in and start your first year uh, unless you're like best of the best coming out of high school, um, which in the case Colin was, but it is very hard. Uh, goalkeepers are known for their size and experience. Um, so it was kind of difficult knowing that I was going to be on the bench, but I knew that I was going to get a really good experience, uh, learning experience from the guy who was ahead of me at Binghamton. Um, he was like a 6'3 German guy, national team. Um, so I was lucky to have that kind of experience in front of me. Um, so I, I wasn't surprised, but I knew what was going into it. Um, and I knew if I kept working, I'd be at that stage my junior, senior year, uh, which is kind of what happened. And yeah, yeah pretty much. So. Yeah, um, that's definitely one of the things that comes into like thought processes when you're looking at programs. I mean, um, when I was committing to UVA, I knew Jeff was the number one guy that was going to be there. And I knew I was going to take one or two years behind him and just learning from him, which is um, probably the best option that I could have chosen because he helped me grow as a goalkeeper and gave me a lot of experience that I needed to take his place when he was gone to the next level. Cool, cool. Uh, but once you got on that field, how did it feel, you know, playing consistently? I know for goalkeepers, that's, that's the main goal, just playing consistently. Yeah, that is the main goal, and it was probably the best experience that first game uh, getting out there. Because uh, as UVA is, like we don't, um, we win games, but we don't fully like shut out teams where we win four zero. So there weren't many times where I was able to get in for like the last ten minutes or something. Yeah. Yeah, that first game was great. It, I mean, it's a it's a dream come true. Uh, definitely nerve wracking, but we were both ready for it. <laughs> I think you guys, you hit on some some really good points. Just, you know, even before getting to the school, you really understood the situation you were getting into, but still understood the benefits, you know, being, being a freshman and being able to learn from some of the top college athletes, some of the top college coaches is, is you know, it's something that you can't ever pass up in moments. So when you, when you see that opportunity in front of you, you know, I, I think that that's a, a key deciding factor. So, you know, outside of that, those two topics, what else really drew you guys to, to, to schools you went to? Um, for me, it was more of the academics. Uh, I knew I wasn't really going to try to play pro. Um, so school, uh, the atmosphere during the games. I mean, I know one of the biggest reasons I went to Binghamton was because uh, when I did visit one of the games, the environment was unbelievable. It was homecoming night. Uh, they don't have football, so – Everything was focused on the soccer team. Uh, there were thousands of people, food and like bands and stuff. And it was a really cool experience. Um, so for me, it was more of like the school soccer combination and then also the atmosphere that the, the team got. Nice. Yeah. Um, for me, of course, academics was also a big part. I mean, with our family, we always put a huge uh, emphasis on that first because you never know what's going to happen on the field. Um, but then like UVA growing up, both my parents went there and that's probably why Chris chose to came back and be with me there. So all of us could have a legacy there, but, um, yeah, that was my number one school going forward because it's in state, both my parents are legacies and it's been one of the top programs with Bruce Arena and now George Gonovach coaching. So last year. Uh, he played I had two two guys drafted out of UVA last year, the MLS draft, Henry Kessler, Daryl DK. Um, you know, it's a great squad. Uh, Cozy, he played in the CCL, uh, the Roanoke Star. Uh, what's it like playing with just that level, level player every day? Uh, it, it's great. I mean, um, the step from club up to college is always a big one. And I was, thoroughly amazed when I first got there but um working into it uh you kind of get used to it and then it just becomes like a habit and working with those guys every day has made me a better player I mean we always say like those training sessions are going to be with some of the best guys that you're ever going to play with because um I mean we believe that we had the best players so yeah so how, how many times did you yell weight room when Daryl DK just 
push somebody down. <laughs> all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> He's a beast, man. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah. Henry, I mean, I watched – Henry Kessler played his first game for New England. I mean, he's just consistent. What's it like playing with just, you know, that level of center back? I mean, those as a goalkeeper, I mean, that's your that's your best friend. That is my best friend. And I'll admit, uh, when uh, my first year playing with Henry, we did not get along very well. We butted heads a little bit, just egos going at each other, which you would expect. Um, but this last year playing together, uh, we, we were roommates, uh, spent a lot of time together, best friends, um, and having him back there, having that, like that friendship relationship type of thing, like it's, it's huge. And having him back there just made my life so much easier. It's a dream for a goalkeeper to have someone back there like that. Uh, cause I mean, he takes every aspect of his life and the game so seriously and all the players at that level, um, winning is their number one goal and being the best that they can be. Uh, so especially having in practices I experienced, um, having that kind of center back in front of you, you can't get much better than that. So, so Chris, when what was the biggest adjustment coming from Binghamton to, to UVA? Uh, it was just like the, the commitment. Um, you know, we made the conference tournament a couple of times while at Binghamton, but when I came to UVA, I noticed that every, sing every single freshman, for the most part, was there over – the summer uh, on top of half the team so we, uh, we me and Colin were both there but uh, there were yeah like half the team were there tra training um, trying to get better ready for the season and it, it's just I think it's a commitment thing because like I mean those guys every single day they were eating right they were drinking like water nonstop, and they just took it very very seriously and it reflected on me because then I try I kept doing I started doing the same things and you can see it through the whole team. It's like kind of contagious where if one or two or three of the leaders start doing this thing, the entire team's going to follow in it. That's kind of what makes that, that team successful. Yeah, the, the commitment level. And, and playing in the ACC every week, uh, it must be a grind. Yeah, I mean, at that point, every game matters because if you don't win the ACC, you're looking for the at-large bid because you know it's in your back pocket. Um, but our goal was to win the ACC, um, so we get that automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Um, but it was – every game was serious, and that's why Colin played every single minute this season because we wanted that best team out on the field um, for every single game. So just going back to what you just said, you know, it's, it's putting the best team out on the field, and, and you see everybody putting in this work nonstop. There had to be that point where – where it's just you two as brothers going into training. And I, I can imagine you know how to push each other's buttons to make sure you're getting the most out of each other. So what was it like Absolutely. for you two just always getting to train together? And how did the coaches feel about that? Because I know from my experience, you know, I've coached twins before and just having those two, they could wild up an entire team just really talking to themselves like they're at home and everybody just, looked to them like, wow, if they're going to go this hard, we, we definitely got to step up like this. So what was that experience like for you guys? Yeah, um, the UVA coaches, uh, I was talking with them for a few days before um, we finally were able to finalize Chris coming in. And I remember talking to some of my old coaches from Loudoun uh, saying that he was coming in there like, how's that going to go? Like, we know what's happened in the past because we were always in goalkeeping training together, button heads. There were a few, uh, a few years out there where we couldn't even be partners. Like, they wouldn't allow us to because we would just, like, argue one's not doing enough or something like that. But, um, uh, but when it came to UVA, like, of course, we'll have those, um, like, arguments, like, on the field. But we, we know how to keep it professional now, <laughs> grown up and everything. Um, but it was, it was incredible having him there because he knows how to get me focused as well. Um, that's something that he knows a lot better than some of the other goalkeepers. And even though he knows how to push my buttons, he knows how to get me focused and ready for the next set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of the roles that they said I was coming in was uh, to kind of be that um, punching bag for Colin to make sure he's all ready to go, whatever he needs. But they knew that I would have that special kind of spark to get him going more than anyone else on the team. Um, so I th I'd say it worked out for us this past, uh, this past season. So I wouldn't be surprised if it happens again sometime in the future. Yeah. <laughs>
No, that that's a that's a good love. So so what I do want to do is, is segue this because you know I I know the guys at Loudon very well, so I I can only imagine you know dealing with their goalkeeper director. The guy would just look over and be like, oh, "These guys going at it again." But <laughs> but let's just let's just talk about some of your your highlights from from Loudon soccer. You know, I, I know you guys played at on different age groups, but there was probably a lot of the times where where you were traveling to CCL match days together, one playing earlier and then the other one following along, even though he wants to go grab a bite to eat, stuck yeah. <laughs> to watch the brother play. So so what were those days like? Long. <laughs> long I, I mean it, it made it difficult for our parents because there were two teams and it was a full day ordeal um back then we weren't as supportive I would want to leave as soon as my game was done um but now I'm glad that I didn't because I could see how he kind of developed uh as a younger player uh than me and I mean I, I learned from him because he his team was one of the best teams that Lions ever produced and I was able to kind of take bits and pieces from him from his games and try to mend them into my team's plans. And so it was productive, um, but they were long, very long. <laughs> yeah, definitely long. Um, but it was kind of the other way around for me. I always, uh, well, when my younger days, I always wanted to go out to his games because I loved watching the older guys and I wish I was out there with them and sometimes played with them. Um, but just being out of, uh, at the field watching his team juggling half the time maybe or just doing something to keep me busy but just being outside and being able to just be in a soccer environment for like a full day at a time was just awesome nice i, I know this next question i'm throwing this grenade out to cause some issues who ran the better training session mark or Jono? Ooh. what type of training <laughs> session now? yeah it depends on the training session <laughs> Let's let's talk about a, a session at, on a Monday right after a, a a tough match that you you lost, and then let's talk about a Thursday training session before a a big tournament. So I'm I'm putting you at both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> I'll go first and just um I haven't really been able to experience Jono's like full team trainings that much so. I don't know. They're both very good at um, like kind of grinding into the guys right after a loss or even after just like a grinded out win that we should have done a lot better. And um, they're really good in that way. And just like demanding more from the team and getting a lot of uh, getting a lot out of the guys uh, like the Monday after. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. There's, there's definitely differences in their coaching styles, but they both have worked very well. Um, as you can see with definitely their team successes in the past. Yeah, I would say for from a goalkeeper's perspective, um, Mondays were our favorite just because we had goalkeeper training. Um, so we knew if, if we were coming off a loss, maybe the team is doing conditioning, but we're getting our, our butts kicked uh, in the goal. So it's a little bit different and something <laughs> that we enjoy a little bit more. Um, but Mondays are our kind of get back into it, get hands on the ball, goalkeeper stuff, and then Thursdays was just a grind, getting ready. It's more of a mental day, getting ready for the game. Um, yeah. Good. Now, another question I have, I know, I believe both of you guys know Kevin Cash. He's our event, you know, director and sponsorship director at CCL. He said he's, he's worked, you know, some UVA camps with you guys. You've been, you know, working UVA camps for some years. What's that experience of, of coaching like? What type of players normally come out to those UVA camps? And, and do you guys see a, a future for yourself in coaching further down the road? Um, players from all over the country and even other countries all over the world, honestly, come to those camps. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of cool to see from the coaching's perspective of like, we're used to being in the like recruit spot, uh, but it is cool seeing both sides. Um, and, but yeah, so like players from academies, uh, different countries, pro clubs, uh, academies, like it, it's really cool to see the diverse group that comes into UVA um, for the camps. And it is cool to see how the coaches handle them versus how they handle us uh, on the field. Um, but it, it's definitely a cool environment to kind of give back a little bit and help out. Uh, I would definitely, in a heartbeat, coach I think it's a fun thing to do I like interacting with people um and talking and helping people learn 
So I, I could see myself going back um, if I don't play pro, which won't happen. But Colin may have a different perspective on it. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a wide variety of players that come out to those camps. And working with Kevin um, as a goalkeeper, you always want just more perspectives to just like kind of uh, just extra data that you can like work through and see the best option for situations. And Kevin and I have talked about uh, just like watching uh, the little kids uh, just talking about through situations like what they should have done and what and butt his heads a little bit, which is fine. Um, and fun just to go at each other a little bit but um, yeah going back and coaching just being around like soccer every day would be amazing I mean I, I do want to further my playing career a little bit but yeah and sometime in the future coaching would al always be an option yeah so back when you played with Loudon what specifically do you all think uh, prepared you the best for playing you know soccer in college I think uh, for my team working with Mark, like his professionalism, um, just demanding more out of me. Uh, my biggest rude awakening going into UVA was uh, my practice, not effort, but just like focus during practice. And Mark kind of like worked, uh, worked my way up uh, from being a little guy all the way up to my um, uh, senior year of high school. And that definitely helped me out going into college, but just his professionalism and demanding more from our team and demanding like professional attitudes was a huge help. I would say it was the, the competition level, playing the teams in the CCL from all over the state and Maryland, um, I would say prepared me because I faced some of those guys in college. Uh, so it is really cool seeing those guys play uh, in the club level, but then also seeing them in college and seeing how they develop. So uh, for me, it was more of the competition level and how good the teams are in the CCL. No, you, you make a good point, Chris. And, and just based off of that last statement, did you or, or were either of you guys able to run into former teammates or, you know, former competitors while in the, the collegiate realm? Uh, and how often did you get to see them? I can imagine it was, it was fairly often. Yeah, it was more on the, uh, the game day experience uh, amount of time. Um, it was hard because of one of the teams is obviously traveling and you kind of have a schedule to stick to, but you try to get in conversation here and there uh, when you're out of school, if they're there. Um, but a couple of teammates that I ran to, um, some from Bethesda or uh, Virginia Beach, um, and then just people that I know. So uh, some of my friends who play at different schools, maybe in a different uh, conference, would run into my old teammates or other people that they saw, and I would always connect with them and see how they performed in their game as well. Yeah, there's a lot of guys um, from my team and from the Loudon 99s that I still um, uh, meet up with after games, especially against Virginia Tech. There's a few guys there that I talk to. And there's another guy at UVA, Brett Halsey, um, who's from the Loudon program as well that we talk to every day. But yeah, there's a, a lot of variety from uh, where CCL players have gone to college. Perfect. No, we, we, we love to call that power of league probably heard that once or before but but no I, I think what what we want to do now is, is get into what is your coolest or most memorable soccer moment you know from from when you started to where you are today there's always that one moment on the soccer field or maybe not on the soccer field in the hotel with the team but what's your one most memorable soccer moment yes yeah, I'll go with the most recent one, um, just because it's on my mind. Um, in the ACC final that we beat Clemson 3-1 to one in, um, there was a play with five minutes left um, that I came out. It was kind of a breakaway, and I saved it off my face. And uh, right after the final whistle, like, I was holding my eye, and Chris came over to me. And um, it was funny because social media, after the fact, was saying, oh, this is, like, so emotional for him where I just had a black eye and Chris was just comforting me afterwards. <laughs> so that, that was, that was very fun and sharing that moment with him and with the team lifting an ACC trophy after that moment was absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'd say for me, um, when I first started playing with Loudon, I was not very good. I started on like the fourth <laughs> team in the age group. Um, and so all the way up to my senior year of high school, when I finally got recruited playing college, um, 
was honestly like just such a reward because I knew that starting from like the D team um, from like U10, U11, um, and finally moving up to the first team in the age group and then Division One college. And then after that, going to UVA, which is for the majority of the season was the number one team in the country. Um, it was such a uh, like just a progression and it was um, meaningful because I was able to play as well as be with my brother. Um, and then also win an ACC championship at the end of it. So it was a really cool ride, and I, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. No, those are those are great moments. It's unique that not many people can say that they've done it with, with their brother before. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so I, I like to hear this story about you guys. I, I love love seeing the history coming from from Loudon Soccer. I, I know all those guys very well, but. And to see you guys continue to play and continue to do big things, your parents probably have a, a whole bedroom set up with just silverware, and trophies, awards, and medals. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a major round of applause to you guys for the hard work. You know, at the end of the day, we had we had another goalkeeper here on our, on this web, webinar last week, Evan Newton. You guys might know him, and and it's one of the things he shared was. You know, the hard work and determination gets you to the places where you are. So, you know, seeing you guys, hearing your story, we definitely can tell it's been a lot of fun. But, you know, the work that you guys put in to get to where you are, it, it definitely can show. And, and I know there's, there's coaches who can support that statement much stronger than I can as well. So, so great work with what you guys have done, what you've accomplished, and really wishing you the best, you know, going forward professionally in today's market like you're looking forward to Chris and then professionally in the game as, as we're still hoping that you you can make that jump college yeah thank you yeah thank you so much all right guys this is the part where y'all get to plug what y'all mm -hmm. want to say uh if y'all have any shout outs anything y'all are working on uh currently whether it's in school or whatnot um it's your time well, I, I know Colin's looking to go pro, but I'm definitely looking to play some adult league in the Arlington area next year. So if you, if you want to, if you need a player or a goalkeeper, let me know and I'll be there. And then lastly, just a shout out to Loudon because um, the journey that they put us through to where we are today, has just been an absolute honor just growing up there and being with their whole staff. And, and the way that we came out is, Pretty well, I would say. So they've done a very good job. <laughs> oh, that's that's a big time. No, like I said, it's it's been an honor to have you guys on this show. I I, I know the path you've gone through has been extremely professionally ran. So we we definitely want to tip our hat to to the guys and gals over at Loudon for being able being able to produce you know the the product that they give to the community. You know, for from CCL standpoint, we want to continue to wish everybody, you know, the best during these unprecedented times of, of COVID-19, continue to, to practice, you know, social distancing, continue to, to stay home. But we, we wish everybody a, a safe and, and healthy period as we, we're looking to get on the other end of, of COVID-19 um, from, from CCL Extra Time. Thanks guys, really did appreciate this time you put forth. And you know this message will will be able to to be shared with our our viewers our membership so the one thing that i'm going to ask you both to do is is leave a little tagline with our community a, a, a word of motivation so uh, i think we've been going oldest first so chris you know a, a quick word of motivation and to, to our membership in regards to to life to soccer to anything at this point yeah i mean just keep positive uh and eager to get back on the field. I know me and Colin are dying to get back onto that field. Uh, so we're doing the best that we can at home, um, whether it's running or playing soccer in the, in the yard, but just keep active, keep doing it because we'll be right back onto the field. And I know some of the players are going to come back as if they never left. So just got to be prepared and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, and then just always be ready. Like with these situations, you don't know when you're going to be out on the field again, but then when you're out on the field, you don't know when your call up's going to be. So in this time, just like make you the better self that you want to be to where you can better yourself when you're back on the field for the next level.
Yeah, guys, appreciate y'all coming on. Uh, Arlington soccer community, big free agent pickup here. Uh, <laughs> definitely holler at Chris for the pickup. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. You too. You too. Thanks. All right, guys. That's the end of CCL Extra Time. This is Ryan. This is Miowa. Um, stay safe uh, and enjoy yourselves. All right. Ryan, go get a new kit. <laughs> All right, guys. See you.